Good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? I am great, and I have to show you my mug. I'm so excited okay. about what I have to show you here. Um, oh, hold on. Okay. Um, so last week, it was my birthday on Friday, and when I got into work, um, I went around the corner to go in my office, and I like swooned. I caught my, I clutched my chest. I like leaned into the doorway. I was like, oh my gosh, I was not planning on this. I was so surprised. Um, there, my, there was all this stuff on my desk. There was like this big like bucket basically of just these gigantic sunflowers, which were so pretty and exciting. And there were some little, they were like birthday balloons, like taped to the side of my computer. And then, um, because normally we're kind of a party branch yes. unless we like to have a party, um, but we can't really share food the way that we used to right. be able to. So, um, and the utter, and just like maximum thoughtfulness on my desk, there were, um, there was like just individual for me, a jar of <laughs> jars of salsa and a bag of chips. So we can't share them on the kitchen table, but they just gave them to me um, <laughs> for, you know, prepackaged donuts and things that was just oh so generous to give knowing you weren't going to get any of them. <laughs> um, and but but there were also mugs and look at this thing this thing look at what i am drinking out of this is a giant mug that is a stack of donuts <laughs> that is awesome I know, I know and i've been like waiting all week i've been i mean i always look forward to doing our show but i've been like i can't wait to because for some reason i didn't want to drink out of it before today i was afraid like well what if it's not clean or what if i break it in the meantime but i didn't and so it's just the best thing. And it's so big. It's so big. It's that really, is really awesome. Big. I love that mug. It's probably a lethal <laughs> amount of caffeine. <laughs> what you know, what was that? What was that? Um, buzzing buzzing hard after that, after that cup. <laughs> coffee. But yes. So anyway, I couldn't wait to share that with you. I was very excited. <laughs> Check out my mug. It's the crossword puzzle mug I told you about. Yes. Oh. And on the bottom, there's a website where you can go to get new puzzles. So you can fill in the crossword puzzle on your mug as you're having your coffee. That, that, that is so cool. I need to track down where that, um, I need to track down where to get something like that. Because I also know other people who would like that. Deb, who works in tech mm -hmm. services, who oh, yeah. um, I can probably totally see her, her break in the morning. You know, she'd drink out of that mug and uh, do her crossword puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what going on with you this week? Um, one thing was I was thinking. Um, okay, actually, I actually have several things. I have so many things. I'm trying to figure out what thing I want to share with you. Um, one thing that I was thinking about is we talked about Dewey last week, and so I had kind of been thinking about arranging, you know, how books are arranged, and about how at my house, um. In fact, my books don't have much of an arrangement at all. And I think it's because I do that at work all day. So at home, they kind of just like, they're kind of just in like the old fashioned library way. Yes, they're everywhere. And they kind of just end up in the order that I got them because the top of the pile or the end of the shelf is just wherever they end up. Because I think I just don't have the energy after doing it at work. And so I was wondering, your books at your house or anyone who's watching, how do you arrange your books at your house? Because I'm so bound to how I have to do it at work, but there's like a lot of fun ways to arrange books too yeah. that aren't stressful. <laughs> I do a mix at my house. Yeah. Um, I kind of group them by subject, like um, mm -hmm. a, a little bit. So like my yeah. Japanese language books are together. My I've got a couple of series that I collect. Those books are together. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> a couple areas of like nonfiction that I'm interested in, those books are together. But it's not in any special order. It's mm -hmm. like, I think there's religion books next to uh, screenwriting. You know, it's just like. It's, yeah. And sometimes I feel like in my, especially like in my nonfiction area. I'm of my, by color. <laughs> oh, color is such a good, I mean, it's so pretty. <laughs> Yeah, it's so nice. And sometimes mine are arranged by subject, and author. subject but kind of like by time of my life too. Like all my books from college are together, even yeah. though I may have books on that subject that I got later. Like my college books kind of exist as a moment in time on my shelf as my books from college and that yeah. kind of thing. 
Subject and author is very good. That seems like you won't lose things. You'll know exactly where they are. You won't spend time standing there going, hmm, I wonder where this book is. I know I have it. Yeah. And I've got like the one shelf of that's like all romances, <laughs> you know, like, and yeah, I just, but I do kind of like, sometimes I will rearrange like those books so that they're a little more color coordinated. Like, you know, this book is yeah. really next to that one. Yeah. Occasionally, well, when we're, slow at the library we have gone through like the new bookshelf and put all the red books together and the orange books and the yellow books just kind of like a rainbow yeah. oh that sounds fun i know at northwest tara also will sometimes make displays by color because it's just eye-catching you know <laughs> i type and what large ones i don't like can shove in the weird corner of my shelf that i can't see them yeah that that little lip that covers over the edge you just tuck that book back there <laughs> Well, why do, you have, why do you have books you don't like that much? Is my question. I mean, <laughs> read them. Let them go. Let them go live somewhere where someone would like them. Is my suggestion to well, maybe it's the cover. I think she oh. likes the book. She doesn't like, it, right? Okay, that makes know. sense. That makes. Sense. It's not aesthetically pleasing to her to look at that that cover. When you say that, sometimes there's in tech services. You know, we get so many new books. I always have a backlog of stuff. Um, oh, Liz's reminder didn't pop up. I'm so sorry. It's probably how we scheduled it. <laughs> um, and so we, I always have like a bit of a backlog of nonfiction books and they sit on this cart and sometimes like there will be a cover or a spine or something in the way that it's situated on the end of the cart. I'll be like, I have to do this book right now because I can't look at the back of this book anymore, the way that it sits there. And you probably feel that way about displays. Sometimes you're like, I want this book to check out, but if it's not going, we got to swap it because I can't have like this person staring at me from the cover of this book, this yes. shirt punk or this whatever, <laughs> whatever is on the cover of that. I just need to swap it. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes like the covers are just, but I I am totally a judge a person judge, judge a book by the cover person. Yeah. I can tell you how many truly wretched books I've picked up and bought because I like the cover. I am a sucker for a good cover. Yeah, I mean, but that's that shows it, that shows it's working. Like the marketing, they want us to be drawn in by the cover, you know, yeah. and, and the cover should tell you if it's a type of book that you want to read or not. I mean, and I always get annoyed when I'm misled and based on the cover, it looks like something that I would like to read, but. Liz has us on her Outlook calendar. She's a true fan. <laughs> a true fan. <laughs> we love um, you, Liz. <laughs> yes, we do love you, Liz. Um, okay, and so Mary says like with Firefly, you get a collectible fandom book and then something happens in the fandom, but you're not ready to part with them. This person makes a very specific, unfortunate situation. I can understand that. Yeah, sometimes like you'll love a story, but then you'll find out like the actor is like an awful person and you're just like, well, I don't want to love the story, but you, but you do. And yeah, yeah. 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 Well, or I suppose also if you are into a series and then something happens in the series and then you're not into it anymore and then you're disappointed, um, but you still love the first part and you can imagine like how you wish it would have gone. But yeah, yeah, there's some stuff you feel like you're still a fan of and want to hold on to, but then you end up conflicted about it. Yeah. The book I'm reading in one of my book clubs was the cover that we had or that the cover on the main book um, was like this girl like in this like assassin's outfit and she had a sword and whatever, which is not a book I would normally read, but that's why I'm in book club. But then the co the copy that I got from the library was like, like an illustration of a girl. It was like very soft. She had this flowing hair. And then the tagline on it was something about like two men love her and the whole world depends on her, which is a completely different vibe than that assassin <clears throat> or a situation. And um, same book though, you know, Right. Yes, Liz. Uh, J.K. Rowling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are struggling with her right now because she's very outspoken about her views that a lot of us don't agree with, and it just like it it it, it does it it sours your your feelings towards. But I still love the books and I love that story. So separate the author from the story. And yeah. Love it. Yeah. Also, it is happy happy birthday to Harry Potter. Tara points out. Yes. Happy birthday, Harry. Yes. Good. Good. 
Yes, um, I'm very sorry that we're not celebrating Harry's birthday this year the way that we have in years past, the past right. couple of years um, with our wizarding event. Um, but we have no control over <laughs> what's going on in the world right now. We don't, but it's been really fun to celebrate Harry's birthday the past couple of years um, with a community wizarding event um, has been really, really fun. Um, I don't know if it, if you don't mind, I was going to say next week, we are still going to celebrate some and we're going to have, um, a trivia event, a trivia event next week, Thursday online. Um, it's going to be on the zoom platform. We're going to host it. I'm going to host the question part, but we'll, Leah will probably be there as well. We'll be managing the zoom situation. And so you can register, um, we have an event for it on Facebook. You can register. It'll take you where you need to register, right, Leah? Yeah, yeah you'll um, you'll want to click on the link in the in the to go um, software where you'll sign up, and then we'll get you the link to Zoom. Yeah, and so you'll sign up, and then we'll email you separately with a link to the Zoom uh, the Zoom room or whatever. And so we'll be doing that trivia next Thursday, so less than a week. Um, but it will be, it's going to be very, uh, all ages trivia. It's not going to be super challenging necessarily. It'll be fun, but, but it's not as in the past we've done pretty challenging trivia and this is going to oh be my God. the questions that Allison comes up with. You have to like study these books in order to answer these questions. And I am surprised at the number of people who know the answers. Like I've read the book multiple times and I enjoy them, but like, I don't remember whose aunt works at the Ministry of Magic and was present at this here. Like it just, it's, it's absolutely insane. The amount of detail. That That's just, why, that is why, be, because there are so many people who do know that much. And so I'm trying to give them an event because so many things, if you've been so devoted for so long, your whole life, like I wanted to give them something that they would then feel like really, it, it, like they would feel good. They they would feel good about themselves for knowing all those answers because they knew that they were hard. And so, um, so it, it's not going to be like that on the online version. Again, we can't, I mean, you're grading your own, you're scoring your own. It's just, we're bound by the virtual, you know, the limits of doing it virtually. Yes. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, feel free to sign up um, between now and Thursday. We'll email you a link and hopefully it will go smoothly. Yeah, I'm sure it will. <laughs> have, you ever, have you been reading anything good recently, Leah? Um, the book I'm writing, reading right now, I'm actually listening to the audio, but I grabbed the book just so I could show it. It's Two Days Gone by Randall Silvis. It's not new. It's been out for a number of years. Um, it's a, a series with a detective, Ryan DeMarco. I love mystery books. And for some reason, I tend to gravitate towards the gruesome ones. And this uh, starts with a very gruesome multiple homicide and um, trying to track down like the prime suspect. So it's told from the, the detective's point of view and the prime suspect's point of view. Um, I don't think the prime suspect's who did it though. Not giving anything away. I don't know yet. I haven't finished the book. I'm only about halfway through. Yeah. But I don't think he did it. So. Yeah. Well, you don't, want to read, right now. you don't want to read a book where the prime suspect from the very beginning is the person who did it. And then you're just reading like a legal procedural, which is different. Than a mystery. Yes. You, want, you want to have that who did it, who done it. You know, that's the point of a mystery. And the legal procedural, you already know who did it and you're trying to prove it or something. And that's just a different thing. But it's like the first in a series. I often like to wait until there are a couple books in the series that are out. So, yeah. Or if it's like going to be like a trilogy, I will wait till all three of them are out so that I can devour them all at once. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like to do, I like to do series in chunks. Yeah. So. You got to binge it, right? Right. Yeah, I'm all. I'm always been a binge reader. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, that makes sense. I definitely do that with TV, less so with books. But I don't read a lot of series. I just, for whatever reason, don't. But um, I can totally understand that because then you finish that and you just want the next one, and then you're like, well, wait, I have to wait two years. Right. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> so I know I asked you what you were reading, but I forgot. 
that I wanted to ask you to tell, I already know the answer to this, but to tell people what you've been watching on your monitor at work. <laughs> okay, so for a long time, I've wanted two monitors at work because, well, number one, it just looks cool. You're looking like you're super serious working a whole, like if you've got two monitors. You're so busy, you can't even contain your work on one monitor. But it's very helpful because I've got like spreadsheets that I've got to take from here, information, like it's just very helpful for me to have two monitors. But I've hesitated about asking for one until this week because this week I discovered, um, again, a lot of these discoveries come from the New York Times. I get that, I, I look at the New York Times, you can look at it free from the library. Um, and they send me a, an email every day about you know the top news stories. And at the bottom of the email, um, there is a link, there's like a couple little stories that are like, they call them diversions. You know, it's lighter stuff, fun stuff. Um, this week there was a link to this website, it's called Windows, Windows Swap? Yeah. 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 Window swap. And you go there and you click on the link and you get to look out someone else's window. Like people have uploaded videos from the, the view from their window. And it is just so delightful. Like I was in looking out a window in, um, um, you know, Bangalore. And mm -hmm. then I was looking out a window in um, London and it was a very foggy day and that was cool. And then I was looking out a window in New York and it was raining and it was just so awesome. And there was a, another window I was looking out and there was a cat in the window and he was just mm -hmm. tail swishing, enjoying the view. It's so pretty. So like I have one monitor that when I'm not doing uh, other things, I have set up so I can look out the window. <laughs> And where I can work. And it's fair to mention, which we may have mentioned on here before, but you don't even have a window because you work on the lower level of the library, so there's no windows um, at all. I love how we just call it the lower level, <laughs> the basement. Like I'm a total cellar dweller. I I can't see outside. I, I will walk outside and be like, "It rained today." I had no idea. So. Yeah getting that 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 look and like some of the, the the windows you can hear like birds chirping and it's just it's delightful and it has been what i needed this week i needed cheering up this week and just to have those beautiful views and looking out at the alps and this beautiful green hillside and the birds for oh it was, it was amazing yeah and of course like that was leah's experience so she called me and told me about it, and I, I looked it up, and the first one that I got on, it was in Italy, but I swear to you, it just looked like around Ohio. It was just like <laughs> kind of flat. There were like these electric poles up there, and and I could see some like fields in the background. It was not the like, it wasn't like the rooftops and the village and the thing in Italy that like you would first might imagine. I was like, oh, well, next, <laughs> I can see that. I can see that at home. Um, but, but it is. But I want everyone to share this. Because the more people who, who who share it and upload pictures of their views, the more variety you have, and like, it, it's just going to make it that much that much yeah. better. Yeah, you can set, you can set up your thing and just send them a ten minute clip out your window. They do have sound. They warn you of that, so like you know you don't want to be like talking in the background or whatever. But um, yeah, yeah, it seems really cool. And Liz I'm, also earlier said that she has three monitors, so clearly she's the busiest of all of us. Wow. Three. And yes, I do. I, I, I work in the dungeon. It's <laughs> and we 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 don't have great light down there. It's like the fluorescent lights. I, I need to buy a sad lamp. Um, but it's it's enough that our plants are doing okay. <laughs> and yes, the plants, oh my god, so many of these people have beautiful plants in these pictures that that has been I love looking at greenery. So yeah. Yeah. So thanks for sharing that because it was really cool. And another thing that I had thought about sharing when we were talking about what books are, what, how we organize our books is I'd read an article a long time ago. And then there was another one recently where they talk about like when someone is on an interview um, nowadays where everything is happening in people's homes and you see behind them and you see their bookshelves yeah. and like dissecting what's on someone's bookshelf. What does that mean about them? Um, and so there had been, there were articles about it like earlier in the pandemic, but I think there was one recently um, in the New York Times celebrity, something about like celebrity bookshelves. And they kind of like go through and like circle, like what, you know, they highlight some titles that they can read the spines of and like what, you know, what does that suggest about when it's possible? 
whoever is on the the thing. And that was kind of funny too. Books have a have all of a sudden been on display so much more than. Yes. One of the things that I have noticed um, when I've been watching uh, the the interviews online since everyone's at home, I, I, I watch a lot of political news. So like you can see everyone's books and their political books behind them. Every person I have seen, almost every single one has this one particular biography of Brandt. Is it really big? Is it like really big? Yes, it's really yeah. big. So, and it's the, the, the red spine. It's really easy. And you know, it's got Grant across it. it, it so it's very easy to spot. But every single person has that biography on their shelf. That's really funny. That's really funny. Um, I, I don't own that biography, but now anytime I'm watching an interview with someone, I will have to, I'll have to look. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I, also has a windowless office. I really recommend this, this, this website. It is just beautiful. And I'd love, like in some places you can hear the traffic and in some places you can hear like animal, like it, it's just so pretty. I love it. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you found that. And I'm glad you found that diagram of the penguin relationship drama. I mean, those two things right there is worth it. You still have it here. Please tell me you have a tape in your wall. <laughs> I still have it. <laughs> well, it's just juicy. It's exciting. Right? That is some intrigue and some. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, speaking of the, well, speaking of the pandemic, as we often do, but um, we did get our first COVID-19 book at the library this week. Oh, yeah. Um, it was called COVID-19, the p- pandemic that should never have happened. And it is our first by Deborah McKenzie. Um, and it kind of just takes an overview of like pr- a little bit of like previous pandemics, what may or may not have been learned and then how this one came about. So it's, we don't, this pandemic's only been going on for this amount of time. We certainly don't know enough to have a comprehensive view of this one, but it's kind of talking about pandemic preparedness and things. And so because of that, it's one of those things, this is our first book, we'll definitely get more, but you're like, okay, where am I gonna, where am I gonna put this book? Um, And most of our books, and I say that because most of our books about epidemics is normally the subject that goes with that, but um, about epidemics are in the medical number in 614. And it's kind of like the history of epidemics because we have not had something like this where it's been a current thing. Um, and so the th- we talked to some about last week about how there's like a social, a social number for illness and that's it services to people with that illness or just the social components of that illness, kind of an interdisciplinary thing. That's not the medical focus. And so that's where this and people, people across our consortium and across libraries in general assign that book to this number. It's in the 362s. And so it's like coping with, this illness on a social scale, but it also there's a number in disasters because <laughs> pandemics are also, you know, like a natural disaster or something. Uh, but that wasn't an appropriate place for this. But when you when you look for that subject, there's also a number and met in a math number for the prediction, basically oh. like yeah, the, yeah, the stuff that the people behind the scenes attempting to figure this out, they would be using things from that 519 number that I can't even wrap my brain around. We don't have books about predicting those things out at our library at this point in time. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we got our first COVID-19 book and I was looking at some of the other things catalogers had been talking about recently. And um, they said that we haven't, no one seems to have gotten these yet but we'll probably get books about making masks, patterns and sewing and designs and different things for handmade masks. And where are those going to go? And we're thinking it will be in 646, which is garments for special purposes. Constructions of garments for special purposes. Why bother with a book on that? Everyone's already made their masks, you know? It kind of seems like, a little too late, too late, but I bet we will get them. I don't, I do not doubt that we will get yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, something with a variety of designs, maybe, or someone who's purporting to have the very best <laughs> mask pattern or something, or <clears throat> who knows what people will come up with. I mean, crafting with cat hair. Um, so who knows? Well, I have to give a special shout out to Lily. She made me a bunch of masks that I love. So awesome. Maybe Lily should put out a book. 
Right? You can do it. She can do it. <laughs> Just don't videotape her cussing at her sewing machine because I'm sure that's what happened. <laughs> Just like a montage or something like that with no with that music and no audio. <laughs> Although she doesn't cuss nearly as much as I do, but I know her and her sewing machine are not <laughs> the best of friends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she just made more masks this morning. She oh, she works on them, need them. Good for, for her. <clears throat> for school. She needs them for herself now. She had the summer off. Yeah. Oh man, so Susan says maybe books on the fashion of masks and that could very well be. And in this th thing I was reading, again, like this kind of catalog or discussion, they were saying mm -hmm. there is a number for masks, but they're they're talking about like theater masks. And of course that's not what the type of mask this is. But um, I bet that we could also get a history on different pandemic gear. I yeah. bet there were books oh, that talk yeah. about facial coverings and other things over time. Oh yeah, and apparently Susan's has made, Susan has made like 500 masks, that's awesome. And Emma has, um, she cusses at her machine too. And a, hey, special shout out to her. She made masks for all the library staff. So awesome, thank you, we love those. And um, Liz says, uh, fancy coffins to build yourself. I actually worked at a library where we had a coffin making book. It was like build, building, building coffins for your pets. And they were like the most elaborate that book went out all the time. I'm sure it went out for people like, what in the world is this? <laughs> right. Because it, it was always like to people at other libraries, never like people in our library who were like. Like picked it up, checked it out and yeah. Right. But I'm so sure that people were like, what? And they ordered it just because of the title. Yeah, probably. Oh, new sewing machine, less cussing than normal, Lily says. <laughs> good i saw a woman in the parking lot of the grocery store one day and she complimented my mask and of course they always ask if you made it and i'm like absolutely not this is from old and then her mask she because she was just you know now this is the thing that people talk about when you meet someone and um she was talking about the weight of her mask and how you know she liked the the um the pleats on mine and things like that and i said well I said, but it's great that you've been making all your own. You get to pick all your fabric and like, good for you for doing that. And she's like, oh, it's so easy. You could definitely do it. And I was like, I don't think I could. She's like, yep, just sit down and get YouTube up and get your sewing machine. And I was like, hmm, but there's the thing. I don't have a sewing machine. And the things are hard to come by. Like, I'm sure they are. People have been buying them. So yeah, I know that the one Lily wanted, she couldn't find anywhere, so. so Liz shared a link to fast, fancy coffins you can make yourself. And uh, she says that the library that she worked at, they always used to make sure to display it. <laughs> one, of the, one of the books that we have at the, at the library that I love to put on displays is a book on how to mellify a corpse, which is, mellify is um, to preserve it in honey. And I'm just like, I, I, I love that title. So I always pull that book out and put it on display. And it often gets checked out. People are curious, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I will, I, I, will, I will pop in with another book that go. I've read. That sounds good. Um, <clears throat> This is actually the second book in the series. Um, the first book is Eeny Meeny. Um, MJ Ar Arledge is the author, and then Pop Goes the Weasel is the second one, and I forget what the third one's called, but I, I did the first three in the series, and there may be more. I, I've only done the first three. They are um, gruesome. So if you're a gruesome mystery reader, these are um, good books. A lot of people are very big fans of like the, the gentle mystery reads, the cozy mysteries. Mm -hmm. This is gruesome and back between like the people who were being murdered and like the detective solving the mysteries. Um, like the, the people being murdered, those are of course very short passages. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the, the killers in these books are like, not anyone you would ever want to run across. So I really recommend this series if you like gruesome. It's nice. um, 
it's not for your 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 cozy readers at all. <laughs> That's good to know. Um, I have then to balance that. I don't have a copy here. I'll, the things that I a lot of things had holds this week, so yeah. I let them go out. But um, we did get a book called Total Turnaround, called Citizen Canine, and it's a history of dogs in the movies. And each spread like a dog from a from from a movie. And um, so if you're looking for something lighthearted that's not gruesome. Um, that is a very, a very happy little read. Um, lots of, lots of cute dogs in there. And, uh, I was happy. It was, to be honest, the card of books that I did this week were all pretty bleak. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just, it was, we got a lot of nonfiction in. Yeah. yeah it was, all of it. it was bleak. <laughs> we would go through periods like that. It's like where every new book coming out is like, the world is ending, global yeah. warming. It's just like yeah, pretty much. It was just a whole lot of a whole lot of world is ending. How can we possibly make things better? The end of life as we know it. All you know. So then I was like, oh, Citizen K9. Oh, look at all these dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you you gotta find that thing that cheers you up. For me yes. right now, it's window swap, but <laughs> right. and for me right now, really, it's this. <laughs> so. That is that that mug is just so cheerful. It's the best. Well, I think we're at our time actually today. I know, it's so sad. I know. Well, it was so great to chat with everyone in the comments. Thanks for saying the fun books that you you know of and read and for, you know, telling us about your mask making and everything. It's very fun to have to chat with you guys as well. Yes, we love we love chatting with you. And yeah. as always, if there are any comments you have or anything you'd like to hear us talk about, we will We'll consider it if you want to leave it in, <laughs> leave it in the comments there and, uh, and last week i did put those slides in last week's comments i know that's not like super ideal because who's going to go back and look at that but i'm telling you now um i did put this the slides that i wasn't able to present um in the comments there so you can see that really long dewey number and a couple other things in case you were interested that really long dewey number is just insane and oh, and <laughs> I believe they had to use the table of last resort to make that number, but I love that the table of last resort. It just sounds so <laughs> it sounds how it feels. And you, you, when I call you on the phone, you can tell when I'm at the moment of last resort. That table feels like I feel when I'm like I don't know what to do with with this. <laughs> well, yes, Liz, I'll only consider it because you may suggest something we know nothing about. And that would be dangerous. We can't be a person. We, we, we could learn. We know where to go to get the information. We'll we know where to go to find things for sure. Yes. We're more experts, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Great Bye.